open your Bibles for a moment, please, to Daniel chapter 7. Uh, there's a microphone. Thank you, Alex. It doesn't matter how technical we are or how untechnical we are. What matters is that we're living in the reality of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeshua, Messiah, coming King. King he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of the Lord. And if you just look at the look tonight in Daniel chapter 6, Daniel in the lion's den which is actually a picture of the Jews during the Great Tribulation. We know there's a seven year period, we know that. But if you turn your Bibles to Daniel 6, and then here we go, we're just going to look at this. Oh, we're going to look at this one here. And then we're going to look in Daniel chapter 6 for a moment, please. The world will seek to do with the Jews what they did to Yeshua, the Messiah of the Jews. Isn't that true? Sure. They will seek to do the same. Jesus today to most people is in the grave, not alive. But here we go. Should we just read 16 to 17, please? And the heading of this is Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel would have been between 80 and 90. He's not a young man who here. He's 80 or between 80 and 90. He's still got the same strength. He's still got the same vigor as Caleb. He said, I've still got as much energy to go into that promised land, Amen. hallelujah, yeah. because his name means hearty. He was a hearty man, Caleb. And to him, the grapes, the promises of God, were bigger than any giant in the land. And when you come to um, our lives now, we've got to recognize that he who is for us is greater than he who is working against, against us. us. But there's a plan, there's an order that's coming to pass, and as it happened to the uh, father, we know he sent his beloved son to die, and he died as king of the Jews. They will seek to do the same. So let's just read this together, please. Then the king gave orders, and Daniel was brought in and cast into the lion's den. The king spoke and said to Daniel, here we go. It's not working. Okay. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter how technically good we are. Mercy of God. See, the thing is, anyone can... It's hard to look when you're by, when you're by yourself if you get it wrong. <laughs> but we are the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Whether I get this right or wrong makes no difference to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's here by his spirit. Amen. And the Father Amen. has been honoured because Amen. we've gathered tonight. We want to understand, don't we, his message. And that's a lovely smile, Christine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are family. Amen. And I just wanted us to, to look at this. Um, this is a phrase that we can say. Should we start again in verse 16, please? Then the king gave orders, and Daniel was brought in and cast into the lion's den. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. What do we say? Hallelujah. Our God, whom we constantly serve, will deliver us. And you know when we, when we, we come and we need prayer, the enemy's done all he can to every moment of our life, the world, the flesh and the devil, to get us to look away from the glory and the beauty of Jesus Christ and his work upon the cross and the fact that death could not hold him. If death can't hold Jesus Christ, death cannot hold us. Hallelujah. So we're alive. And here we go, a stone was brought and laid over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet rings of his nobles, so that nothing might be changed in regard to Daniel. Daniel, the Jew, in the lion's den, now needed supernatural help. Do you see yourself now? You've been handed over. You, the Father has handed you to the Son. The Son has now handed you back to the Father. You're in his care, and he says, you need supernatural help. And we say, well, thank you, Father. I want to live my life in the power of the supernatural presence Amen. of Amen. Almighty God. Do we say, Amen. 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 Here we go. So he's in a very good position here. And if you turn to Matthew 27, verse 59 to 66, keep your finger in Daniel, then we're about to start in a moment. But just, you, you know when we get together, we're to do each other good, aren't we? Yeah. We're to remind each other that all that we need is written here in these wonderful words. Amen. Let's read this together. We have got a stone rolled out over the mouth 
of uh, a den. We have got ravenous beasts waiting to kill an 80, between 80 and 90 year old man. And we've got the king's signet rings there. And a man is left alone with the Lord. Daniel is left alone. And just as the Jews will be left alone, all the confederated nations will have come down to gather around the Jews. The Jews will be po so polarized that they will, some will flee, won't they, to the Petra where we've been. Others will stay in Jerusalem. Two, two thirds of all Jews will die. One third died in the Holocaust, but two thirds are going to die in that last terrible day. And we're just gonna look at some descriptions of that in a moment. But shall we just read this? Just hallelujah. Shall we start at, um, Am I? Yes, here we go. First, can we start at uh, verse 58, please, and go down to 66 in Matthew 27. This man, oh, we better start at 57. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea, Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. And what do we say? Hallelujah. The wheels of God's chariot may move slowly but they move surely it's not god's will that any man should perish but that all should come to a knowledge of the truth and thereby be saved yes yeah, no. verse 58 this man went to pilate and asked for the body of jesus then pilate ordered it to be given over to him joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth laid it in his own new here's your tomb here's your lion's tomb which he had hewn out of the rock, and he rolled a large stone against the entrance of the tomb and went away as Daniel previously and Mary Magdalene. Here she is, this is the type of the bride, was there and the other Mary sitting opposite the grave. Now on the next day, which is the one after the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together with Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that when he was still alive that that deceiver said, How can they call him a deceiver? Son of God, we just sang that. Amen. Son of God, mm -hmm. Prince of Peace, yes. Son of God. Yes. And the Lord says, he's a deceiver. Mm -hmm. Leave him in his tomb. Mm -hmm. He's a deceiver. After three days, the deceiver yeah. said, I am to rise again. Amen. Therefore give orders for the grave to be made secure until the third day. Lest the disciples come and steal him away and say to the people, He has risen from the dead, and the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a God, go, you have a God, go, make it as secure as you know how. And they went and made the grave secure, and along with the God, they set a seal on the stone. And then if you just turn, please, to Psalm 22, verse 21. And you're thinking, what has this got to do with Daniel? Look what Jesus said. This psalm is called the Psalm of Sobs. But it's also, if you look at the heading, it's Ashaleth Hash Shahar. Uh, somebody can say it better than me. But it means hind of the morning. The deer that leaps. Psalm of Sobs. And in verse 21, look what Jesus is saying. Save me from the lion's mouth yeah. and from the horns of the wild oxen, thou dost answer me. Mm. Um, so we've got a lion's den prophesied. We've got Daniel thrown into the lion's den at the time of the Jew. Then we've got Jesus Christ himself going in to a lion's den. And if you just come with me to Genesis for a moment, please. And I think, I've written this one down, but somewhere around here, we have got a bride and we have got a stone that needs rolling away. And it's Genesis 29. Jacob, again, is uh, Jacob. Became, Jacob, the usurper, became the prince. Uh, with God became Israel, and it is here to do with a stone here. First chapter, Genesis 29, verse 1. Then Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the sons of the east. <laughs> do 
Do you know where he came? He came to the well of Sychar, where the Samaritan woman was found. He came to the well of drunkenness. And the word in Hebrew also means to hire and purchase. He came to the well of drunkenness to purchase himself a bride. And this is in Midrash. This is the, here it is in the Old Testament. And he looked and saw a well in the field, and behold, three flocks of sheep were lying there beside it. For from that well they watered the flocks. But you see, the water was blocked up. Now the stone on the mouth of the well was large. When all the flocks were gathered there, they would then roll the stone from the mouth of the well and water the sheep and put the stone back in its place on the mouth of the well. And Jacob said to them, My brothers, where are you from? And they said, We are from Haran. And he said to them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said to them, Is it well with him? And they said, It, it is well. And behold, Rachel, his daughter, is coming with the sheep. And he said, Behold, it is still my day. It is not time for the livestock to be gathered. Water the sheep and go pasture them. But they said, We cannot until all the flocks are gathered and they roll the stone from the mouth of the well. Then we water the sheep. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. And it came about when Jacob, Israel, saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went up and he rolled the stone from the mouth of the well and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted his voice and wept. You see, unless somebody rolls the stone away, Israel never hears of the good news of Jesus Christ, the one who having in her hand a gold cup full of abominations, and of the unclean things of her immorality, and upon her forehead a name was written, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and of the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered greatly. So we've got a real Babylon that was destroyed, and then we've got a, a, like a spiritual mystical Babylon, which will carry on right up until the end. Okay? And if we just turn from over to Jeremiah 50, verse 38, there's warnings given all through the Bible of Babylon. Jeremiah 50, please, verse 38. And look at the description of Babylon. She's a land for of idols. And what we were saying last week, it's easier to be in idolatry than it is to serve the true and living God. Does God speak to you during the day? Yes. yes. Does he quicken your heart? Yes. Does he challenge you? Does oh, yeah. he correct our behavior? <laughs> yes. We have a living God. Dagon, the agricultural god of the Philistines, had to fall in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant. And the only thing that was left is head of God, which is his wisdom. His hands of God, which meant he was powerless. And all that was left was the fishy part of their God. You see, there's no power like the power of God Almighty, the creator and ruler of the universe. But what we're going to look at tomorrow, what the enemy does in our life, he's cunning and he comes with schemes. It's from the Greek word methodia. He comes methodically to us. And he tries to cause us to be concerned about things that we have no concern about. We don't need to be concerned. We just look at him tonight. You just see there, you can see the future of Daniel, the Jew, thrown into the lion's den during the tribulation like nothing on the earth, the wrath of the everything. And they'll have to be supernaturally the Jewish people taken care of. And while we're in Jordan this year, we stopped. I'm just talking to Bridget tonight. You know, we had the blessing of pulling up outside a shop mm. in Jordan. And the man never knew this. And he got out and he went into that shop. He said, this is the only shop in the world bakes this bread yeah. and he bought this flat piece of warm bread great big piece into the coach he said everybody everyone here take a piece of that bread and he said it's the only woman that bakes that bread and that's what james the guy from jordan was saying and also they said they found a, a an unpolluted water source that would last for 70 years wow. well most southern jordanian people are going to feed yeah. daniel in the lion's den yeah during that three and a half year period. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And it says in the Bible, sorry. 
He had no problem with them. He found he thought it would be a privilege. And they said, that gentleman said it would be a privilege to serve the Jews. He said he was a Christian, but he oh. had no idea. But it says in the Bible that the Jew, Grace. the Southern Jordanians will feed them, but also they'll be fed supernaturally. But it said very clearly, their bread and their water will be sure. So we're on a coach where we've been informed that the water has just been found, enough for 70 years. And why does God get that man to stop and bring that bread? And he said, every one of you taste that bread because you'll never yeah. taste it anywhere else in the world, isn't that? So it's somehow God gives us an insight. In what I'm showing you now will be multiplied because if there's a million Jews living there, at least that, then God's going to take care of them. So that will actually be the period in the future which mirrors what's seen in Daniel and Isaac Newton said to throw away the book of Daniel is to throw away Christianity. Mm -hmm. And so can you imagine them hurling Daniel into the lion's den? Were the lions hungry? Josephus says the lions weren't hungry and that's why they didn't eat him. The lions were hungry. But you see the truth of it is God shut the mouth. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. And we are in the company of God tonight who yes, said you already you. know what's coming upon this earth. Mm -hmm. That's why our testimony and our witness and our information for people coming, because we can show very clearly if it had Madroshi hermeneutics means if it happened before, it, it, it will happen again. Were the was Daniel the Jew delivered? Then did a decree go out that everyone would be blessed from the Jews during the, the thousand year reign of Jesus? We will be blessed through oh. the nation of Israel. Verse 38. Would you like to read this out with me? Please? A drought on the hope. Now, uh, by the way, the heading of this chapter is Prophecy Against Babylon. So you might need to turn your page back there and see very clearly this prophecy is given by Jeremiah against Babylon. And we're looking in verse 38. A drought on her waters and they will be dry, for it is a land of idols and they are mad over fearsome idols. So you can see the ravenous beasts, lions, rippers, terrors, shutting, closed off, as if dead and they think they can kill them. Supernaturally, God is going to raise them up. And you match that by going to Isaiah, please. Isaiah 13, verse 19. Are you feeling better already, Kathy? Yes, thank you. You're inspired, aren't you? You've only got to get into God's word and you think, you're revolutionizing me, you're changing me, you're quickening me. You young boys at the back, you've chosen the best place to be tonight. You see, because would lions kill men? Yes, there were a host of them there. But not those, because the command of God, and that gives you courage to know nothing happens unless God says, I will allow Amen. this to take place. Okay, Isaiah 13, verse 19. Okay, and what the head in Babylon will fall to the Medes and the Medes and the Persians. Now, what we said was the head was gold, the head Babylon was gold, the first um, of the Gentile empires, he had one head. But the Medes and the Persian shows a breast with arms. So you've got one arm Persia, one arm Medes, Media. And here it says Babylon will fall to the Medes. Medes. Did it? Yes. Yeah. When? Yeah. On the night that the supernatural writing came on the wall and God had brought in a Cyrus to go over, right over to that man and to bring an end to his life that very day that the warning came. So we read together, Isaiah 13, verse 19. And Babylon, the beauty of kingdoms, the glory of the Chaldeans' pride, will be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, and we haven't got time to go through all of those, have we? So we'll just oh, turn this page over that Alec has given me, nice, and we'll just have a look. Okay, so let's go now to Daniel chapter 6, please. We're going to read together verses 1 to 9. And all through the Bible, if you like tomorrow, we're, we're going to be looking at names and what they mean, and numbers that we've got here. You see, Daniel became the Prime Minister, the Secretary of State. Why? Because he was chosen above all. Because Darius to be saw that he was a man worthy of giving a position to. Lucia has just started a job and she doesn't have a lot of technical skill at the moment. But what she's got is a heart to work and a heart to do well and a heart to earn. Amen. And I've said to her in the week, you may not know what you're doing, but boy, when they see you turn up, they'll be ever so thrilled you've arrived. 
because I watched you in my garden, mm. along with Jack. You're the best workers ever. You see, if you see a busy man, give them a job. Mm. See, God knows our hearts, doesn't he? And he, mm. he he's going to prosper us in what we do, not for just financial gain. He wants us to have a good name. Then in the middle of you doing your gardening, you're able to tell them about Jesus, aren't you? Mm. And she's only been saved two years. So this is and this is equipping you, isn't it, Lou? Yeah, here we go, everybody. Right, we're going to read verses 1 down to 9. It seemed good to Darius. So what I was trying to say was, the head, this is not an autonomy. He had different governors here. He had 120. Whereas before, it was, it was like a sort, like a, a monarch. It was, it was just like one head. Here, you've got... There'll never be a kingdom as powerful as that, as you say, but there won't ever be a kingdom as terrible as Rome mm. at the very end. So we're going to look at the different ones, and they all end. They all have to end with a deliverer turning up. Who, did, who turns up here? Who turned up at the end of the Babylonian Empire? It was Cyrus, and we'll see him here. He turns up again here at the end of this. So in chapter 6, verse 1, it seemed good to Darius to appoint 120 satraps. They're like governors officers, leaders over the kingdom, that they should be in charge of the whole kingdom. Now, 120, brothers and sisters, is the, is the number of the end of all flesh. That's what it means here. And we know that Noah took 120 years to build his boat. And so everybody on the earth could have got on that boat if they'd wanted to. And it was 120 people gathered in the upper room. Jesus Christ invited how many people to the upper room? 500. How many turned up? 120 because they'd come to the end of all their flesh. But what happened to the other 380? In the flesh they found something different to do. We don't come to Christ for an answer until we've come to the end of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And you'll also notice when Solomon, with the filling of the temple, there was 120 in there, wasn't it, with the trumpets when the Spirit of God fell. So verse 2, over them three commissioners, of whom Daniel was one, and these satraps might be accountable to them, and that the king might not suffer loss. Then this Daniel began distinguishing himself among the commissioners and satraps, because he possessed an extraordinary spirit, and the king planned to appoint him over the entire kingdom. So here he is. He, it says here, he began to distinguish himself. Why? He opened his window every day, three times a day, and he prayed towards Jerusalem. Why? Because the temple was the nearest thing to a mediator between God and man. That's why this is a godly man. Like you, you see, though, you've been appointed by God. All of us have here. We're going to distinguish ourselves, and we're going to become, we're going to be given positions by Almighty God. Then we're going to have envy, because look what happened then, verse 4. Then the commissioners and satraps began trying to find a ground of accusation against Daniel. Every time you read Daniel, think of the Jews now. Think of the anti-Semitic spirit that is rising again all over, especially in Europe, but it will be right to the end of the age, won't it? Uh, here we go, an accusation against Daniel in regard to government affairs, but they could find no ground of accusation or evidence of corruption, inasmuch as he was evil, and no negligence or corruption was to be found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any ground of accusation against this Daniel, unless we find it against him, with regard to the law of his God. So it becomes a religious problem then, doesn't it? Then these commissioners and satraps came by agreement to the king and spoke to him as follows. King Darius, live forever. All the commissioners of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the high officials and the governors have consulted together that the king should establish a statute and enforce an injunction that anyone who makes a petition to any god or man besides you, O king, for 30 days shall be cast into the lion's den. Now here you can see that Darius the Mede is about to exalt himself um, and become an object of worship. This is where he sees the type of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. Now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document so that it may not be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which may not be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document that is 
the injunction. You see, this is where here he's taking the place of a god. And um, he knew the intensity of Daniel's religious convictions, but they drew up a statue which they took to the king, hoping for him to sign it, and in doing so to bring down Daniel. And that's where you can see the whole world, can't you? Uh, coming against the Jews and all they stand mm. for. Um, mm. It's very sad. Mm. The king takes the place of God. Look in verse 10. This is how we're to be, brothers and sisters, because when we're looking at this, we're looking at it in the future, but we're also looking, what can I learn from this passage of scripture? Everything is working against Daniel, but what does Daniel do in verse 10? Now when Daniel knew that the document was signed, he entered his house. Now in his roof chamber he had wings open towards Jerusalem. And he continued kneeling on his knees three times a day, praying and giving thanks before his God as he had done previously. That's what we should be like in these days coming. Mm. We, we, we've got a roof chamber, we've got a higher place, haven't we? Mm. That we're to go up and we're to kneel towards not Jerusalem us, but we just come before God. Amen. You see, he is our mediator, and we found the truth, how much wonderful it is to live after Jesus Christ and before, isn't it? Yeah. We're living by the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 11, Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making a petition of supplication before his God. The interesting thing is, if you read any commentators, they say this, he didn't start to do, he didn't start to pray then. He was already praying then, yeah. and he was known as a praying man. He was distinguished because he was a man of prayer. He was a man who knew that God saw everything, and no matter what position he was placed in, he was going to be the best worker. He was going to be the most honest man he was going to be, because out of the three, out of the 120, then out of the three, he was the one that held the highest regard. They could find nothing against him personally, nothing to do with his government affairs, but they could only find something about making a charge against his God. And you can see that, can't you? In the days to come, we're trying to get a building of our own because they'll hear what we're saying here and they'll want us out of this building, won't they? Because they will not be able to agree with everything that we're saying. Okay. So we've looked here, look, in verse, whoever doesn't go against the order that the Antichrist gives, in a way, in verse 7, should be cast into the lion's den. So I've written there, just in, in verse 7, towards the end, uh, be cast into the lion's den. It will be the Jews going into the tribulation. And if you just go for a moment to Genesis chapter 41, we've always got this, uh, this awful period uh, of uh, seven years in the Bible. And Joseph, type of Jesus Christ, remember he had a dream, and he was called to interpret the dream. And then he was given in a dream a story of seven cows. And the cows were sleek. And then the cows became very thin. Then the seven ears. Then the fat cows. So if you homework, Genesis chapter 41. If you go through and highlight your many times here, you've got... But first two, seven cows, three, seven other cows. Then these cows that that um, were okay suddenly become gaunt cows, and then the gaunt ones become uh, become the fat cows. Then you've got the cows. Then you've got here in Genesis 41 verse 22. I saw also in my dream seven ears, full and good, coming on a single stalk, and then lo, seven ears withered thin, and scorched by the east wind sprouted up after them. Then in verse 26, the seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dreams are one and the same. But you see, look at verse 27. And the seven lean and ugly cows that came up after them of seven years, and the seven thin ears scorched by the east wind, which should be seven years of fine. It is as I have spoken to Pharaoh, God has shown to Pharaoh what he is about to do. And it says, Behold, seven years of great abundance are coming in all the land of Egypt, and after them seven years of famine will come, and all the abundance will be forgotten in the land of Egypt and the Rabbin. The family will ravage the land. You see, ultimately, they will have to come to bear, uh, as they have to come to Joseph for the corn, they'll have to come to Jesus Christ. If you just turn your yeah. page to Genesis 41 for a moment, you can see here 
<laughs> I don't know enough about this, but in verse 34 of Genesis 41, let Pharaoh take action to appoint overseers in charge of the land, and let him exact a fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven years of abundance. Mm. And I've written here, this is very late one night, Joseph is about to be called the saviour of the world because he receives a new name in verse 45 mm. and he takes a Gentile bride. But I've written here, something collected by grace when there is an abundance. Mm. You see, that's what we're doing today. We're collecting the corn. We're collecting God's word today while we can. But the days will come where maybe even our Bibles will be taken away from us. And, and that's what we have to realize. It's a fifth. Five is the number of grace. Every Egyptian was led out of, every Israelite was led out of Egypt in the rank of five. Five abreast. He leads us out in fives. And what we're doing, what we're just saying today is if you've got pressure, who works better under pressure? Although we don't like the pressure, we all work very hard yeah. under pressure. Is pressure coming for us as Christians? Yes. Yeah. 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 Are we going to know what are we going to truly know what we know? Those when I first got saved, I hated those cows, fat then thin. You know, there'll be a good time of abundance, then there'll be a famine. And then but I didn't understand the drosh. I didn't understand that thirty one years ago, but we do understand it now always a period of seven year period where there will be a terrible famine as we can see. So if we go back to Daniel chapter 6 for a moment please write a second what we've said here is the king takes the place of God haven't we? And, he's, and so here anybody praying or anybody here against this one particular God should be cast into the lion's den if we just go from there to 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4 this is in a way, what Darius the Mead was doing, he was setting himself up to be greater than God, and he brought a law out against God. 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 2 to 4. Are we heading for a man of lawlessness? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who said that? Yes, it's true. Isn't it? Yeah. Should we just read? Um, we'll read 1 to 4, please. Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, that you may not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter, as if from us the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object. Is that what Darius has done? Yeah. He's lifted yeah. himself up, has he? Yeah. So-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Is that is that what Darius the Mede did? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But is that what the Antichrist is going to do? Yeah. So to know the future, we look at the past and we can see there's a lion's den waiting, just like there was for Jesus Christ, but up from the grave he arose, the Jews are going to arise. Mm. Hallelujah. But when they do, we shall see them be released. Yeah. We will be there with him. So if we're wondering what our position is, we are coming back. Darius is a type of the Antichrist. Have you ever thought of that before or seen that before? No, no, you can no. see it there. Does he set himself up and say we can't find any mm -hmm. navigation that we can say you are not to pray for any God but mm -hmm. the one that we say? The whole of chapter 6 points to time and Daniel's people will once more be restored to their land. Yes. There shall rise up among them one who will magnify himself, set himself up in the temple. Okay, and then if we go to, uh, well, you, if, if you're making notes, I have got notes of tonight, by the way. The latter part of Daniel 11 from verse 36 gives you a vivid description of this Antichrist. But we know that the Jews will be gathered back to Israel in unbelief first. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. Daniel kept on praying. The aged man is in sweet communion with the Lord. And uh, here we go. Now look at this. If we, we, we'll, we'll get this done, I think, tonight. Verse 11. 
What's Daniel doing wrong? What is the Jew doing wrong waiting for, for Jehovah, waiting for God to help him? Why is the Jew offending everybody on earth? Because he bears the name of God's son. Yeah. He's hated, isn't he? He's kneeling down, the Jew. The lion's den is waiting for anyone who does. Does he still go in and do it? Yes. Verse 11, then these men came by agreement and found Daniel. What was he doing? Making, Making petition. petition and supplication for his God. And Amen. does your heart say, Lord, please find me faithful? Yes. yes. Please find me faithful in these last days. Verse 12, then they approached and spoke before the king about the king's injunction. Did you not sign an injunction that any man who makes a petition to any god or man besides you, O king, for thirty days is to be cast into the lion's den? The king answered and said, The statement is true. According to the law of the Medes and Persians, which may not be revoked. You see, he couldn't save him now. This is a picture of showing you there's no human being that's going to be able to save that Jewish nation. He couldn't revoke it. He'd set it all up. Darius wants to rescue Daniel, but the law is inalterable. Do you know what that means? What God is saying, there's no man who's going to be able to save yeah. any man. Yeah. The, the, only, the people thrown into the lion's den, and everybody else on the whole earth has only got to have. Yeah. They've got to be in a pit. They've got to be with a ravenous beast. Paul says, I fought with the wild beast of Ephesus. The lid's got to come down, which means confinement. And no man is going to be able to say, the king had made the law and the king would not change the law. As much as he might have wanted to see the Jews saved, he couldn't be done. And that's exactly what's going to happen in the future days. You can see it's coming. Daniel is cast into the lion's den and as we looked in Psalm 22 verse 21, the Psalm of Psalms, he said, you've caught, cast me into the lion's den. Is it making sense? Yeah. Yes. But you see, there's another law. This is what we must think tonight. There is another law. And it's a law of love. Yeah. It's a law of mercy. Yes. And it's a right, law of man. grace. And God says, when man has laid his seal upon you, and we sang it, that last verse, that there's no scheme of man, no force of hell, no scheme of man can pluck me out of God's hand. The stones, here we go, let's carry on. Verse, are you enjoying it? Yes. Amen. Is it relevant? Yes. yes. Amen. You'll be able to speak to everybody you meet. Amen. It's true, okay. isn't it? It's all here. Brother Jack, I love you with all my heart. We can talk about these things in the garden, can't we? <laughs> the end has been shown. No, no man will be able to save any children. Mm. They will be locked up with only supernatural help. And for some wonderful reason, God let us taste the bread this year. We told about water on a coach in Jordan. Come on, let's read verse 11. Then they answered and spoke before the king, Daniel, Daniel. here he goes, or shall we say the Jew, who is one of the exiles, of course he's a Hebrew, from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king. Well, we won't be able to, will we? Because we shall be loyal to Jesus Christ, or to the injunction which you signed, but keeps making his petition three times. I want to meet that man. I want to meet that steadfast man and woman that keeps making his petition when all seems against him. And he's, mm -hmm. are you trapped in your confinement today? You still may keep making your petition. Verse 14, then as soon as the king heard the statement, look, he was deeply distressed and set his mind on delivering Daniel. And even until sunset, he kept exerting himself to rescue him. But this is showing you, man won't be able to rescue. Man will have no plan during the tribulation to save man to save the Jew. Verse 15, then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, recognize, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians that no injunctions or statute which the king establishes may be changed. Okay. Verse 16. So he had to give orders, didn't he? He couldn't do anything. Here's the time of Jacob's trouble. This is the time of the tribulation. The king, there will be a king, the Antichrist, who will give orders, and the Jew will be thrown and cast into the lion's den. The king spoke and said to Daniel, your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. And, and as we've said, there was another place, a stone laid under a Roman power, but Jesus Christ rose from the grave. Yes? 
Amen. Amen. Daniel could not be hurt by the lions. But as death could not be hurt by the lions, so he who went in the jaws of death could not be held by death. Hallelujah, mm. Jesus Christ. Mm. Here we go. After a sleepless night, Lord, verse 18, who's the first one at the tomb? Then the king went off to his palace and spent the night fasting. No entertainment was brought before him, and his sleep fled from him. Good. <laughs> then the king arose with the dawn and the break of day. This is Mary Magdalene, isn't it? And went in haste to the lion's den. Do you go to the lion's den? You go where they thought they ravage your Lord and Saviour and say, I thank you this wonderful morning that that stone was rolled away. That one that had a signet ring on it, that one that had a seal on it. You're not in that, you're not in no grey for me, Lord Jesus Christ. You're alive. alive. In 31 years, he's kept me alive. And for however long you're there, he's kept you alive. Amen. We're looking tomorrow at the feet shod with peace, just as a as we're recapping. But your feet are always shod with peace if you're a Christian. Yeah. But it's the enjoyment of peace, because the word shod means habit. It means every day of you've got the enjoyment of God's peace. And there was a rising tonight as we sang, Prince of Peace, oh, yeah. Son of God. And, and it, there was a crescendo and it got louder. And I don't know about you, but you're saying, oh, thank you for peace. Yeah. Thank you for peace. Yeah. I've got God's peace in my turmoil. I've got God's peace. You've got God's peace. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph. Even the unbelievers will be wondering if the Jews make it. You see this man rushes to here. Verse 19. Verse 20. And when he had come near the den to Daniel, he cried out with a troubled voice. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you constantly serve, been able to deliver you from the lion. Yes. The world will wonder how will the Jews survive. The same God who raised Jesus from the dead will bring them out. And what's more, we will be there when he comes over Edom. And we're looking at that on Sunday. The 200 miles is, um, is, is Kadesh, Edom, all that Syrian, Lebanon, that whole thing. The very area pinpointed in Psalm 29. You can watch the whole order of how it all happened. Verse 22. Uh, verse 21. Then Daniel spoke. Should we read it together, please? Let's make some noise. O oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth, and they have not harmed me. That's what the Jew will say when you pray for them. Seek the peace of Jerusalem, hey Jack? As we seek the peace of Jerusalem, then we say, Father, in the name of Jesus, as your, as as you delivered Daniel from the lion's day, you will deliver the nation of Israel. Even today, as it's surrounded by her enemies, let us be known by God. Let the, the numbering angels know that there are churches. If we're the only church in this rooty area who still believe that God has yes. got a plan for the nation of Israel, Amen. but are they going to go into the lion's den? Yes, they are. Are there going to be unbelievers wondering if they will survive? Yes, they will. Will the Jordanians take food to them. Yes, yeah. they will. They will come into the tribulation, into the uh, millennial reign, and their babies will be who we teach for 1,000 years. And the knowledge of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. And He says, I will come to you with weight. He says, I will come to you with the copiousness of my glory. That's what God says to us, and all the nations will have gathered and be blessed through Israel. Okay, shall we carry on? My God sent his angel, and we've done this, and shut the lion's mouths, and they have not harmed me, and as much as I was found innocent before him, and also towards you, O king, I have committed no crime. Then the king was very pleased and gave orders for Daniel to be taken up out of the den. Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no injury whatever was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. Now, on that little bit there, trusted in his God, we know, is Isaiah 53. They'll call out Isaiah 53, and in Isaiah 54 is the fertility of Zion. That's how they were trusting him. They say, come and be our saviour, come and be our redeemer. Verse 24, the king, now this is the blessing of the millennial reign. The king then gave orders and they brought these men who had maliciously accused Daniel, all the Jews, and they cast them, 
their children, their wives into the lions. God didn't cast them into the lions' den. God doesn't want the destruction. No. They. That's what the, that's what Darius and Eve did. No, that's not what God wants anyone to do. And they had not reached the bottom of the yeah. den yeah. before the lions overpowered them and crushed. They hadn't reached. Now, what does that say to Josephus? They were hungry. <laughs> What is that? Josephus was saying, I'm trying to rationalise. Why didn't the lions eat an 80 to 90 year old man? Could an 80 to 90 year old man kept the jaws apart? No. no. Because says, I, I, Daniel in the lion's den is going to show that the Jew in the tribulation will be kept alive, not by man, but by supernatural power. Amen. But the ravenous beast will be hungry to see yeah. the end of that Jew. Our father uh, used to refer to the Jews. He hated the Jews because he thought the Jews were rich. He had no understanding of the Jew. They say you never find a Jew that isn't rich or that doesn't have money. There's something deeply ingrained in a lot of people that is an anti-Semitic spirit. Let's carry on, shall we? Why are we going to carry on? Because in the future, eschatological teaching, this is the end of the trouble for the Jew. And now the blessing comes for the Jew. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to finish... Not just yet, on that. I'm just going to show you that. See, verse 25. Darius the king wrote to how many? All the peoples, nations, and men of how many languages? Every. Who were living in all the land. May your peace are found, but only because the Jew, because the deliverer has come for the Jew. And that will be the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to see him at the end mm. of this chapter. I make a decree that in all the dominion of my kingdom men are to fear and tremble before who? The God of the Jew. The God of Daniel. Daniel is the Jew. The whole world is going to tremble before the God of the Jew. We will be blessed for a thousand years because we will have Israel's blessing. We will get in because of the... We, we, the Jews have been put aside for us to get in, but ultimately the blessing for a thousand years comes from the Jew. Look what it says, should we read this together? For he is the living God and enduring for how long? Forever, because after the end of the thousand years, what happens? The new Jerusalem comes down and then man does see God, not for one thousand years, but when the thousand years are finished and the new Jerusalem comes down as a bridegroom, as a bride adorned for her bridegroom, so to speak, and we end up living there, that's when the dwelling of God shall be with man, because Satan would have been cast in to the fiery pit. And his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed, and his dominion will be forever. 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 Here we go. Should we read this together? Verse 27. He delivered and rescued and performed signs and wonders in heaven and on earth, who has also delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Well, we could read it. He delivers and rescues, performs signs and wonders in heaven and earth, who has also delivered the Jews from the power of the tribulation. And here's the verse 28. Remember? Cyrus, the Persian, is a type of Jesus Christ. He is the anointed one. So this Daniel enjoyed success in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, Cyrus the, the Persian. Persian. It's always Cyrus the Persian, a type of Christ, that brings the end of the tribulation. And after the Jews have come through the tribulation, there is blessing on the earth for evermore. But it's all had to go through the process of the followers of God, the living God. Daniel was a Jew. The Jews themselves will be for a period of time in there. Now just to finish, okay, um, we need to just turn to Isaiah 11 for a moment. I'm just going to quickly, just about 10 more scriptures. Uh, Daniel's deliverance foreshadows the faithful Jewish remnants. But Self-exaltation, can you agree? Sorry, Pride and deification of man, impiety, blasphemy, hatred, persecution, cruelty. Man putting himself in the place of God will be the leading features until the true Cyrus comes to yeah. mm. In the last days, it said men will be lovers of self, yeah. haters Both of God, God, ungodly, unholy. We're in those days, aren't we? No mercy. Yeah, revelation. No, showing no mercy. But let's have a look at the day when the knowledge of the Lord covers the earth yes. as the waters cover the sea. This speaks of the restoration of Jews. There's just three verses we're going to look at. Isaiah 11, verse 11. Please. Isaiah 11. 
the restored remnant. Then it will happen on that day that the Lord will again recover the second time with his hand. The remnants of his people who will remain. Look at this in today. Assyria. Egypt. Egypt are going to come to the Lord. Amen. Oh, you look at them, and that's what Alec and I were saying yesterday. When you look at that, and that British cameraman who got killed. But then you look, you see the Muslim Brotherhood there saying they want to institute that. They, 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 we know the Sharia law, that is their plan. Yeah. Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Kush, Elam, Shinar, Hamas, and from the islands of the sea. And he will lift up a standard for the nations and will assemble the banished ones of Israel and will gather the dispersed of Judah from where? The four corners of the earth. Verse 16. And there will be a highway from Assyria for the remnants of his people who will be there, just as there was for Israel in the day that they came up out of the land of Egypt. Now, Okay, there's going to be that, there's going to be restoration, but you need to turn over to see the way they come back. This is where we need um, uh, AB. Genesis 19. Have you got your AB there, Patrick? Uh, Isaiah, sorry, 19. Isaiah 19. Yeah. Can you read 23 to 24? Oh, before we get there, sorry, Patrick, I need you to read Isaiah 18, verse 7. Have a look at this. Have the Jews, according to Daniel, had a terrible time? Yes. Have they been shut in with yes. no man able to help them, just a deliverer coming? Yes. yes. Have a look how they come into the millennial reign. Have a look how they come in. Isaiah 18, verse 7. And Patrick, could you read this, please? This is speaking of Egypt, uh, of Israel. In that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts, of a people scattered and pure, and from a people terrible from their beginning, hitherto a nation melted out and trodden underfoot, yes. whose land the rivers have spoiled, the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, the Mount Zion. The people it says the description is they are scattered and healed. They will come back like those lean cows. They will come back like those stripped stalks. They will come back like those who've been ravaged but not killed by lions. They will be like those who've had no help of man other than those who take food to them. But Ultimately, they will need supernatural help. I've always looked at this scripture and seen people coming back scattered and healed, stripped, changed, a different attitude. Our last trip to Israel found the Jews in a, in a very different, more aggressive way, and the Jordanians in it, yes, very different. But the Jews will come back scattered and healed. They will have been humbled and they will have to call out to God. And that's what we've just seen in typology. Then if you just carry on for a moment, please. We're going to go to Jeremiah 30, verse 3, please. Just have a look at this description, and then we're going to go to bed. <laughs> and thank the Lord together. Aren't you thrilled that you're born again? Aren't you thrilled that you're born again? Aren't you thrilled for you that you stayed awake? Yes. Yeah. 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 Aren't, aren't we awake? Now, a million demons could come into this room tonight. Not one of us are going to be afraid, are we? No, no because the entrance of God's work brings yes. light and it gives understanding to the simple. And he says, I'm, I've told you what's going to happen, and it is going to happen. There'll always be a Gentile empire, and there'll be a remnant of the Jews, but there'll have to be a rising up of a modern day Cyrus. But the Cyrus that we come back with over the caves of Bosra, over Eden, which we're all looking at Sunday morning, will be the the glorious Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Like Where have you been? Your robes are dipped in blood. Mm. He says, I've been working. He says, that uh, my, arm, my arm has worked your salvation. Mm. He says, who is this I see? Isaiah said, he's asking a question. He said, who is this? Who is this that comes up? <laughs> and he says, actually says, he's swaggering. It means he can't wait to get there. 
It means he's leaning forward, it means in the Hebrew. Leaning forward on his horse. We're all on horses behind, Dave, by the way. I've never ridden a horse before. You won't need to be on a horse before because you'll have a supernatural lesson at the very <laughs> front. <laughs> You know, we've got a leader at the front, and it actually, just put your finger there folks for one minute. You've got time to look at this before we pack away. 63. Sunday morning, we're doing Psalm 29 to do with this. Who? Verse 1. God's vengeance on the nations is Darius, the Mede, right? Shouting us, your God saved you, and then judgment coming on those who put the Jews into the lion's den, down into the lion. Who is this who comes from Edom, which is where Petra is, with garments of glowing colours from Bosra? This one who is majestic in his apparel, marching in the greatness of his strength. And you've got a little margin there. Look, in your margin, he says, he's inclining. He's inclining. Why is he inclining? Because he's going to liberate the Jews. Amen. Why? Because they just called out Isaiah 53. But just carry on. It says, look, it has to be Jesus. He's inclining in the greatness of his strength. I cannot wait to get there and deliver my people. Look at He says, it is I who speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Well, why is your apparel red? Why are your garments like the one who treads in the wine press? And this is what Jesus says, because he's the only righteous one. He's the only one who can save. He says, I have trodden the wine trough alone. Yeah. And from the peoples there was no man with me, remember? No man could save a man. The king's deed had been done, the statute had been said. The law was irrevocable. He couldn't even save the Jew then. No man could save the Jew. Why? Because God's going to get glory of saving the Jew. When he comes to save the Jew, who's with him? We are yeah. right behind him. We're going to land there with him. And from there, we come down to mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Okay. We'll see the river flowing. And where the river flows, there is life. And Amen. then he says, I have trodden the wine trough alone, and from the people there was no more with it. I also trod them in my anger and trampled them in my wrath. And their life blood is sprinkled on my garment, and I stained and I stained all my raiment. Just go back to Isaiah 53 for one second for those. I know we know it, but how good to look at it again. Look at this. They've actually got to say, haven't they, here? The exalted servant. Look, Isaiah 53 is the pleading of the remnant. If you write your notes there. The pleading of the remnant. And it goes with Psalm 80. And they've got to say, you were despised and forsaken, men, verse 3. You were a man of sorrows and a kind of grief, and like one from whom men hide their face. You were despised and we did not esteem you. Surely you have borne our grief and our sorrows you have carried. Mm -hmm. Yet we ourselves esteemed you stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Mm -hmm. But you were pierced through for our transgressions. You were crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon you. And by your scourging we are healed. All of us, this is the Jews speaking, like sheep have gone astray. Each has turned his own way. And then look, you go down to verse 12. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great. He will divide the booty with the strong, because he poured out himself to death. He was numbered with the transgressors, yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. Now, take away the chapter head in the fertility of Zion. They call that out, and they're shouting for joy, look. Yes. O Baramon, you have borne no child. And the reason you know you just five, they've suddenly got married, the bride of Jehovah. For your husband is your maker, Amen. whose name is the Lord of hosts, that's his millennial name, and here he is. And your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, who is called the God of all the earth. Hallelujah. Yeah. Isaiah. The Jews are going to call out Isaiah 53. They're going to be fertile in Isaiah 54. But just before we get home, 30 verse 3. Have a look at this of Jeremiah. 30 verse 3. Your Bible's got lots of, lots of uh, 
Let's read, shall we, from verse 3 to 7, and we nearly finish. It brings us back to a seven-year period. Dave, if you've learned anything tonight, it's a terrible period of time where the abundant and fat become lean and, and have no man to help them, and God has chosen the Jews to go through that time. And that will be when the church has gone. When the church goes, whether we're pre-trib, mid-trib, we can't be post-trib. No, we're too well taught for that. But we're pre-trib, mid-trib, inter-trib, sixth and seventh trib, whatever you are, it won't. Whatever the Lord wants us, he'll give us the grace when we need to keep looking to the mediator. Amen. Okay, verses three to seven. For behold, days are coming to, this is the, Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will restore the fortunes of my people, Israel and Judah. The Lord says, I will also bring them back to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now these are the words which the Lord spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus says the Lord, I have heard the sound of... This is it. We read it too fast. He's saying, I have heard a sound of terror. Is being thrown into a lion's den a sound of terror? Yeah. Of dread, and there is no peace. There'll be no peace on the earth at that time. Ask now and see if a male can give birth. Why do I see every man? See this. Why do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in childbirth? And why have all faces turned pale? Because this is Daniel in the lion's den. This is the Jew in the tribulation. They are shut in as though dead. And no man will come to help them because no man can, because God is going to be glorified for saving. And when he comes, he's inclining forward. And we're with him. Have you, have you seen that? Why is... I mean, I could make a remark there. Why, why has every man got his hand on his loins? As a woman, fear. And in the book of Revelation, which you read with these books too, it says, men shall gnaw through okay, their tongues. They will seek to kill themselves. Men will seek suicide and death will elude them. Yeah. This is what's going to come upon the earth. We have not been chosen to go through that. We have been, chosen, we have been saved from the wrath that is to come. Should we read that again, verse 6? The, Jew, the church isn't in the midst. This is not the church, Daniel. And Nathan, this is the Jewish race. This is who we pray for every time we say grace. We pray, Father, we seek the peace of Israel. Mm -hmm. We remember them. But I'm going to say more from today. I'm going to say, Father, as you deliver Daniel from the lion's den, I thank you, you shall deliver the nation. Mm -hmm. As long as the sun man. is in the sky and the moon, he says, so shall my covenant with Israel. Amen. Why are all faces turned pale? Here it is, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great. There is none like it. It is the time of Jacob's distress, but he will be saved. Amen. Amen. You see, Daniel's distress, uh, uh, Jacob's distress is Israel. Israel's distress. Israel is the Jew. The Jew was in the tribulation for seven years. This speaks of the tribulation. Nearly finished. Just go to Isaiah 24, please. Isaiah chapter 24. <coughs> this is a nice. 1 to 12. Isaiah 24. Judgment on the earth. Behold, the Lord says, the earth uh, lay... Behold, sorry, the Lord lays the earth waste, devastates it, distorts its surface, and scatters its inhabitants. Well, it's pretty distorted now, isn't it? Yeah. But there's worse to come. Wake up. Yeah. Wake up. Yeah. When we moan, wake up. There's worse to come. But we've been saved out of it. The way he chooses to save us out of it, we believe, will be the rapture of the church, which will bring in the fullness of the Gentiles. But once the Gentiles gone, once the deliverers come, then all the forces are upon the Jew. Mm. But look at that. Distorts the earth's surface, scatters its inhabitants. The people will be like the priest, the servant like his master, the maid like the mistress, the buyer like the seller, the lender like the borrower, the creditor like the debtor. <laughs> what would 
What, what would the, um, the mile uh, square of London think of that? The creditor will be like the debtor. No man will be, we've just read it, no man will be able to say that the decree could not be revoked. The earth will be completely laid waste and completely despoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourns and withers, the world fades and withers. The exalted the people of the earth fade away. The earth is also polluted by its inhabitants, for they have transgressed the law. You see, God's judgment is upon us now. Violated statutes, broke the everlasting covenant. Therefore a curse devours the earth, and those who live in it are held guilty. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned. Remember the Song of Solomon? Why did the bride become so dark? Why does she look sunburnt? It's the heat of the tribulation. Mm. Speaking of the bride of Jehovah, we're the Lamb's bride. Few men are left. The new wine mourns, the vine decays, that's Christ. All the merry heart inside, the gaiety of tambourines cease. Play your tambourine on Sunday morning because they'll. The noise of revelers stops, the gaiety of the harp ceases. They do not drink wine with song. Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. The city of chaos is broken down. Every house is shut up so that not... Are you picturing it as you read through it? There is an outcry in the streets concerning the wine. All joy turns to you. The gaiety of the earth is banished. Desolation is left in the city and the gate is battered to ruins. That's a description, if you want to write across it, of the tribulation. But look, and we could probably finish here. Yeah. Children's time, verse 13. And I've carried on a few more of these scriptures, by the way, for tonight's okay. reading when you're in bed if you want to. Yes, there will be a godly remnant. Isn't that wonderful? That godly remnant will be fed by the three nations that don't come under. Is it the Treaty of Rome? Is the Ro Roman Empire being revived? Yes. Yeah. Only three nations didn't come under it. Only three cities. Amnon, is Ammon, Moab, and Seir, is it? Ammonite. Edom. But you see, the truth of it is, Daniel 11, they weren't in the first empire. They weren't in the second. They're going to be the only ones without the mark of the beast to collect the food to take them to the Jews. God has gone ahead in every way. Need to do this. But look at this remnant here from verse 13. For thus it will be in the midst of the earth among the peoples. Look at this. This is the godly remnant. But this is the Jew, not the church. As the shaking of an olive tree, as the gleanings when the great harvest is over. Look what they do, verse 14. They raise their voices, they shout for joy. They cry out from the west concerning the majesty of the Lord. the Lord. Therefore glorify the Lord in the east, which means in fires. We're called to glorify the Lord in the fires. In the, co in, in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, in the coastlands of the sea, from the ends of the earth we hear songs, glory to the righteous one. But I say, woe to me, woe to me, alas to me. The treacherous deal treacherously, and the treacherous deal very treacherously. Mm. And you can go round and you can read that. And we're just going to finish with this one scripture, then we can finish, okay? I thought I'd be and I promise we'll finish. Because are you getting this in some order tonight? Is there plenty there? Jeho there will be Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> And here they are in Isaiah 43, verses 6 to 7. Isaiah 43, verses 6 to 7. In the midst of a time where men's hands will be on their loins, faces will grow pale, men won't be allowed to die. They will still look at this chapter, Isaiah 43, Israel redeemed. And it says, at verse 6 to 7, it speaks of um, Israel here, and These are the witnesses of Jehovah. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, and whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed, even whom I have made. And then when you go back and you look at the notes, you can see that there's a few more scriptures which we all know. 
And I'm just going to read this last bit. For those who wonder where the white horses are, if you don't know, in Zechariah 14, when it says very clearly that we shall be with him when he comes that day. Okay. Isaiah 14, and the last one is Revelation 19, and then before you shoot me, that's definitely it. You see, on that day, he's landed in Edom. Yeah, we are going then, Edom. Zechariah 14, verse 3, The Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as when he fights on a day of battle. Mm. And in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. This is after Edom. Yeah which is in front of Jerusalem on the east, the Mount of Olives will be split in its valley, in its middle, sorry, from east to west, by a very large valley, so that half the mountain will move towards the north and the other half towards the south. Go to verse 9. God will be king over all. The Lord will be king over all the earth in that day. The Lord will be the only one, and his name the only one. And then go to Revelation 19. Here we go. Verse 14, down. You see, Cyrus had to come to liberate the Jews. But Cyrus is Jesus, and here he is. Revelation 19, verse 11, is the coming of Christ. I saw heaven open, behold a white horse. He who sat upon it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and wages war, and his eyes are a flame of fire. Upon his head are many diamonds. He has a name written upon him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, which we've just seen him wearing in Edom. He's inclining in front. Here we are. And his name is called the Word of God, which is why we're studying tonight. And the armies which are in heaven, will have God in the rapture, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. There's your supernatural. Um, <laughs> beautiful. Yes. Yes. Father, we have gone from um, a man in, in a dead, a man who did nothing wrong, a man who was distinguished in the way he lived his life, a man who lived in a Gentile age, a man, indeed, he was a Jew. But before that day, we thank you that we've got our day to be distinguished. Amen. And we just want to thank you that we can tonight seek the peace of Jerusalem. That we thank you that together we can say that, Lord, we know that the Jew has been put to one side. Yeah. That we may get in. And if there's anybody here tonight who questions their salvation, who wonders about anything, then we think of the trial and persecution that the Jews will go through on that day. But to think, Father, they've been laid aside for us the church to come in, the Gentiles to come in. We have seen the overthrow of the head, Babylon. We have seen the reign of the Medes and Persians. And in both of those, the, the Jew was um, like Meshach, Shavak, and Abednego, put in a fire, put in a flame, put in a place to be burned. But there were four in that oven. And we thank you, Lord, there was somebody there closing the lion's mouth. And I thank you tonight that we have read that the Jew was shut up and no king could revoke or help because it's not man's